Hi everyone, today we are exploring the Fall 2018 updates for Google Classroom. For a more comprehensive look at Google Classroom, check out my new book found in the link in the description below. Hello everyone and welcome to this update overview of the changes in Google Classroom just before the start of the 2018 year. Now there are a lot of changes with the new Google Classroom so we're just going to go ahead and jump right on in and see what some of those changes are. Now in order to know what those changes are we are going to also go to some of the changes to the old classes that we have from last year so that you can see some of the differences. So first thing if you go into a class that you made last year, some things you're going to notice immediately is at the top, the tabs are different and we have people now instead of students as well as we're missing the about tab which uh, usually is on the right but now is all the way in the far right corner of the banner. If you go ahead and click the about it is now pop up still has your description, your class code, and your class files. I will say that those class materials may be moving in uh, the new version, but they haven't actually finalized where those are going right now. Um, with that, if you do want to make any changes to this particular pop-up uh, in the old system, then there is the settings gear at the top right corner. You go ahead and click that. There'll be an edit icon in the top right of the class description. Make those changes, you still have your class code, you still have the ability to turn on and off some settings, and your class materials are at the bottom. So here, uh, that is just the main change with the About uh, section. There's other things in the About section that are missing. They're also now here on the Stream page. We have links to the Google Drive folder, Classroom Calendar, and Google Classroom. The Classroom Calendar may be being phased out too because there isn't a link for that in the new interface. Uh, the topics are still here, the stream is still the same with assignments, and you can add assignments, questions, and announcements to the stream. All those things are still there, um, but some of those things are actually being changed in the new version. Also, we have people and says students as our tab. Once again, we're missing that about. Those are all the changes to an old class. We want to take a look at some of the new features of the new classes that you make this year. First one is that you'll notice the tabs is different. There's still people, there's still stream. Now there's classwork and that is where uh, the assignments and the questions will live uh, instead of in the stream. The stream you can even see only has create announcement and even in the announcement there is no topic section anymore. It was literally, as the title says, to create an announcement for the students to get with the most recent announcements being at the top of the street. So you might be thinking then, where in the world are the uh, classroom assignments? The first thing to note is that whenever you do create an assignment, it will still appear on the stream, but you don't actually create them here anymore. Uh, if you go ahead and actually click on the title, it will go directly to the classroom instructions, uh, except if you're a teacher, go to the marking. So let me quickly just go ahead and switch to a student view. And then in the student view, if I go ahead and click on the title, it'll go directly to the assignment instructions. There isn't that additional step for the students to have to worry about as it was in the previous interface. So going back to the teacher view, uh, we just also want to talk a little bit about the class code. If we go into the settings here in the top right, uh, once again, we still have our description. Uh, there is the edit button at the top to change the class and the description and the class title. Uh, and here in the general section, uh, there isn't the class activities. Once again, I don't know if it is going to be at this location or not. Uh, I do want to point out here's the class code. And if you do want to display, go ahead and click on the code itself, hit display, get the small one. There is a full screen. You can click on full screen to make it as big as you want for your projector or for your interactive whiteboard. And go ahead and close that. Um, here's also, once again, where you can go to copy, reset, disable your particular class code, as well as the stream if you want to be able to change who can actually post and comment. You can do that here as well. Um, and of course, deleted items and guardian summaries are here as well. So we can go ahead and leave our class settings. One thing to note is that this settings gear is actually not visible to students. As you can see here in the student view, they don't see that as well. They don't see some of the settings in the about section, which as a teacher, we would see there. So apart from that, um, also things to note is that there is no topic section here in the stream uh, that has actually gone into classwork as well. So here we might as well go to the classroom section and talk about it. So the topics are now the headings of the particular sections. If we go ahead and create topic, uh, say for example, let's make a unit one and go ahead and add that 
then what will happen is that it'll create a new heading and a new section for that here in classwork right now. And I can go ahead and move that up and organize uh, where my topics are going to be as well as the different assignments and questions in each of the individual topics. So if I go ahead here and create an assignment, uh, here I can go ahead and give the title, the instructions. One of the nice things that they've added here is that now um, you can actually go ahead and at points, but uh, I'll just show that right after I finish typing example of a title. So here there's the points and go ahead, change, choose ungraded, give it right directly there, the due date, the topic. Uh, once again, I can now choose what topic it goes under. And then from there, I can go ahead and choose the files I want to attach to it. All that's still the same. And then I can go ahead and assign as necessarily. And then when I go ahead and assign, it will go ahead and put it in the topic of choice in this particular view. Now, just because it is gone in a topic here in the stream, it will go still in order of when it is posted. So now I have at the very top, there is the assignment that I just created. Uh, so there is still a chronological posting as well as classwork being organized into topics, kind of like uh, different binders or different dividers within a single binder when a student is organizing their notes. There is also a copy link section in each of these topics. I don't really do a lot right now because even if I go ahead and select this copy link, uh, and then open up a new tab and go ahead and paste it. What you'll actually find out is that when I go ahead and paste, uh, here I go, all it's actually going to do is it's going to go ahead and take me back to this classwork page. So nothing really, um, really new about that. Um, and it doesn't really identify by each of the individual topics, although it implies that it will eventually. The other thing is I have this resources topics. I'm not exactly sure whether or not this is the best alternative for class materials right now. It is great that you can actually move it to the very top so it's easily accessible for students. But whenever you do upload a particular file as a assignment or as a question, it does appear as that in their summary of their work. So it can actually be a little bit confusing at looking at their summaries later. Also, um, here there is our links to our Google Calendar as well as to our Google Drive folder if you want to see uh, the assignments, uh, the due dates, as well as the files in those particular Google apps instead of here in Google Classroom. So with that, that's really all the big changes of Classroom work right now. We do want to go still to people section. It has been renamed to people because this is also where the teachers are. So you can invite teachers from this particular section as well, as well as invite students if you want to do it manually like that. Um, here is also where you can still uh, invite guardians for uh, your students. And in the settings, you can even uh, just remember that the class code is now in settings instead of here in uh, the people which it was in previous ones. The cool thing though is if you click on a student's name it will actually give you a list of your students assignments as well as the option to email their uh, parent or guardian uh, as long as it has been added or email the student directly and you can also include a student work summary. Uh, this particular one uh, the student doesn't actually have a guardian so I'm just going to go back to uh, the list of people so that I can go ahead and select one that does. So here's Alex. I'll go ahead and hit the send an email and then it'll give me the option to email the student, the guardian or both. So then they can get basically a screenshot of this particular screen so that they can see the progress of the student in Google Classroom. So the next really big feature is quite large when it comes to grading Google Docs uh, based assignments in Google Classroom. Uh, they've created a brand new interface for that. So if I go ahead and go into uh, one of the classroom assignments where there is a Google Doc, so I'm going to go to Classwork, I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the assignment and view the assignment. Here I'm going to see this particular uh, hopefully familiar screen. There is a little bit of graphical changes to uh, some of the different sections here, but really the biggest change is when it comes to marking these Google Doc assignments. If I go ahead and click on a Google Doc, it is actually going to open me up to uh, this new grading tool interface where at the very top it actually has uh, the students list so I can actually go and switch students within this particular interface. I don't have to go back to the view assignments in Google Classroom uh, as well as it automatically turns to suggesting mode. So anything I type in the document will actually be uh, entered as a suggestion, kind of like a comment so that the students can actually see what I'm actually directly changing in the text itself as well as uh, really one of the big features is uh, the fact that 
And now when I'm giving comments, there's actually a comment bank where I can store the comments that uh, I've been making because quite honestly, you make many over and over again. So here I went and made a comment for good. Uh, I'm going to make another one. There's just the plus to add a comment to the comment bank. So here's another comment. And this can also be tedious adding them one at a time. So one of the real advantages of uh, the comment bank is if I want to add like multiple, I just add them on different lines uh, in this particular window and uh, it will actually add them all as separate comments. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to add one. I'm going to add um, another one right here. And then after that, I might as well also add a third comment. So all of this in the one comment. Uh, also a great thing is that if you already have like a Word doc with all of them on separate lines, you can literally copy and paste in here. So I have three of them I'm going to add and then one, two, three. All of them are now separate comments in the comment bank. So now that I have this comment bank, which is accessible in any of my classes now, what I can do is I can go ahead and now uh, specifically use some of these comments. So uh, I just forgot to mention there's a search here. If ever you need to search for your comments, if your comment bank is really large, it's just there at the top. Um, but uh, the other thing that we want to be able to do is actually use these comments now that we have them. So we do want to start just like a regular comment. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight a sentence. I'm going to go ahead and click on the bubble to add a comment. And one of the things that you can do is that you can go ahead and just click on the comment bank, hover over the comment you want, and then copy to clipboard, click into the comment, and then hit paste. That's a lot of steps. So one of the simplest things you can do is just use the number sign, then it'll bring up a list of your comments. You can even start typing the first few letters of the comment you're looking for, and then you can go ahead and click the comment button, and then you'll be able to go ahead and comment. Uh, have a comment. Uh, just a few keyboard shortcut things that uh, can make your life a little bit uh, faster as well is once again, I'm just going to go hi highlight a section, uh, create the comment, once again, use the number sign and go ahead and use the keyboard select. And then if I go tab, then I can go ahead and automatically set comment and then hit enter. So I can go tab, enter, and then that will go ahead and create the comment as well. So there's just a few things to make the commenting a lot faster. Also in this grading tool, there is a grade section. I can go ahead and give um, Marissa a grade here. She did okay, so I'm gonna give her 15 out of 20. Uh, and then you can also add private comments as well. You cannot use the comment paint for this. You're seeing I'm using the number key. Nothing is actually coming up. So you will actually have to type in your private comments and uh, that will appear in the actual assignment uh, section when Marissa goes and sees that particular assignment. So with all that done, I can go ahead and post now uh, the private comment and go ahead and return the assignment from this interface, which is wonderful. So I can do it individually for a student or I can wait till the very end and do all of them together. And then from here, I still don't even have to go back to Google Classroom in order to change. I can just go click on the next arrow and then the next student's assignment will load. I'll be able to go ahead and um, make comments on their files and continue on from this particular interface without having to uh, go ahead and um, go back to the classroom and switch to the next assignment. So this really helps make it a lot faster in order to uh, mark assignments with this particular interface. Uh, and here I am just showing once again that I am just adding a comment, once again, adding it really quickly, getting it in, and then I can go on and move on to the next particular uh, task. So uh, here, once again, just giving a grade 10 is probably a little bit too mean. So let's uh, probably give something like 12. It's a good thing I don't actually teach English on a regular basis. And once again, we can add uh, comments and uh, go ahead and post and return. So this is really a tool that will hopefully save you a lot of time when it comes to marking Google Docs based assignments inside of Google Classroom. Works with Google Docs, Google Slides. Um, I do believe it also works for images and PDFs, but the selecting of where the comments are is a little bit more difficult. Um, but this particular tool can really help you get through your class assignments a lot faster than uh, what we previously had to do. So with that, that's really the big uh, feature change of uh, Google Classroom. There is still a few of the other housekeeping things. Oh, I forgot to mention that if there's multiple files, you'll just see them here on the right side as well. So that a uh, single student, you can click through their other files. Um, but before uh, we close off, there's a few other things to go through, just some housekeeping things. Uh, when it comes to changes with Google Classroom, one of the biggest uh, comments that was feedback was, oh, can I please copy a classroom? So the first thing that I want to mention is for classes that were made uh, previous to this 2018, 2019 year, if you go to the kebab menu in the classes list, um, unfortunately, 
uh, in there, absolutely nothing has changed. All that is still exactly the same, but in a new class that you make, there is now a copy feature. You can actually now go ahead and copy. So here, I'm just gonna show this example where I'm making one for the 2019, 2020. I might as well also change the section number again, and then go ahead and uh, give it a different room or the same room, 109 is fine. Go ahead and hit copy, and then it will go ahead and copy uh, everything in uh, the uh, topics and classwork. So it says that specifically in the heading that it is only the classwork and uh, the classwork items and the topics. So this means students won't transfer over and announcements won't transfer over. Uh, those things have to be created separately. But the great thing with this is that it also, when it creates all those classroom assignments, doesn't populate them, so it doesn't automatically post them. Instead, when I go to the classroom section, they're all drafts. So if I did want to actually release one to my students at the appropriate time, I can click on that particular assignment, click on edit assignment, and then I can go ahead and fill everything that I need to with it, assign it, and then that will be ready for uh, the subsequent year when I'm doing this particular course again. So this year you still have to kind of create everything over again, but next year you will be able to copy a complete assignment. The other thing is in the settings in the left sidebar, you can actually do more granular notification changes now. This actually came earlier this particular year, as well as when it comes to uh, your notifications, you can turn off notifications for certain classes so that it's not like you get them from all your classes or none of your classes. You can choose whether or not you want them from specific classes. Although you can't say granular notifications from one class and all notifications from another, it is uh, you set your notifications and then you set which classes you want those notifications from. So with that, that is everything um, with the new changes in the 2018, 2019 year. And um, I hope that this will help save you some time in the future when you are planning and getting ready at the start of your year, as well as as you are working with Google Classroom throughout the rest of your year. With that, thank you for listening. And until next time, learn something new each day. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter we will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.